In this video, I'm going to give you my amateur day trader uh, opinion on whether or not you should use uh, simple or exponential moving averages in your day trading. All right, guys, uh, my referral links are in the description box below. Please use them. Again, my referral links to Apex Trader Funding, which is currently running a sale, uh, Top Step Trader Funding, and uh, the Trading Pit, as well as American Express Blue Cash Preferred Credit Cards, are in the description box below. Please use my referral links. Okay, guys, so as an amateur day trader with some experience and part time YouTuber, um, this is not a topic that I topic. Uh, I, I, I talk about often, but um, I want to talk about, in my opinion, whether you should use moving averages or not. All right, so first, let's uh, talk about what a moving average is. So guys, a moving average is simply the average price pot, uh, plotted over a period of time, and depending on whether it's a simple or an exponential moving average, um, depends on the the weight of the most recent time period. So. Let's put on a simple 14 period moving average. So, as you can see, the simple moving average over 14 periods will uh, simply plot out the average price over 14 periods. And at the top left of your trading view screen here, you can see that regardless of whether you set this to the hourly, to the minute chart, the simple moving average here is going to uh, sort of hug price. And then you also have the exponential moving average, which uh, this one I'll show in a different color. Alright, so the nine period EMA I'm going to show in pink. Okay, so you can see that the exponential moving average, which weighs the more recent periods at a greater weight than the lat latter periods, um, the exponential moving average more closely hugs price. But for this, uh, the purposes of this video, I'm just going to use the uh, simple moving average, but the same concepts and principles that I'm about to talk about apply to the exponential moving average. Uh, as well. Okay guys, so there's two basic strategies that people typically, typically use uh, when looking at two to three, although there's a lot more guys, honestly. Um, basic strategies that people use uh, when using a moving average. So number one, they're going to use it, let, let's talk about the most simple strategy, which is, is price currently sitting above or is it currently sitting below the moving average? Okay, let me talk about my opinion on that strategy. Guys, in my opinion, it's it's pretty damn irrelevant whether the market is cur currently sitting above or currently sitting below um, any sort of moving average uh, because it's just not predictive of future price. Past price is just not predictive of, of future price. Um, other factors like high impact uh, high impact news events, your economic calendar, the time of the day, uh, market inefficiencies and liquidity are going to be much more predictive of future price, whereas merely knowing whether the market is sitting above or below uh, a moving average, guys, it's just, it's just irrelevant information. It, it really, um, you could use it in, in really either way. So, for example, if I were to say that, hey, price is currently sitting below the 14 period simple moving average, therefore I'm bearish because the market, uh, the market should be leaning bearish, right? Price is sitting and has closed below the simple moving average over a 14 period. Okay, well, that, that information, as you can see, uh, is, is pretty useless. Um, you could use that information to, to get a bullish bias uh, and I guess that that you know when the market was trending that would have worked out for you but um, I, I, guys I just don't think it's that predictive so I would say that strategy number one in my opinion as just as an amateur day trader part-time youtuber I don't think that just looking at whether the market is currently above a moving average or below a moving average is, is really predictive and that goes back to that disclaimer which is past performance is not indicative of future results so I really don't think that that's a, that's a winner. The second 
uh, way that people will use a moving average is uh, whether the the price itself has just crossed above or below a moving average. So you, you would first look at whether the market is sitting is sitting above, currently trading above or currently trading below the moving average. I've already described to you that in my opinion that's not predictive of anything. Uh, the next one is to look at uh, touches or crosses of the moving average. And I guess that this has a little bit more predictive value, especially in a trending market. You know, these touches, for example, the 14 period moving average, if you were trading that uh, in, a, in a solid uptrend like that, I, I think that that had some value. But as you can see, guys, you're gonna, you're, when the market is in, a, is in a consolidation period, it's really not that predictive. So a touch here and a touch here, and you could have made a couple of points, but then the market turned around on you. Uh, that touch did work out, but I, you know, look, you're getting a signal there, signal there. You're constantly getting signals in uh, a market that is that is not trending or detrending. And you know, if we go on the electronic electronic trading hours and look at the market, uh, including the times when the market is not as volatile, well, guys, I mean, obviously, you're just gonna if the market is sitting right on the moving average. You can't trade every touch, every cross of the moving average. You, you would have so many signals and that would be pretty much useless. So uh, if the market has touched a moving average or if it's crossing a moving average, does that matter? Uh, is that indicative of future price? I don't think so. Um, so I don't think that that strategy, in my opinion, merits any, any real attention. The, let's go back to the regular trading hours. Um, this, the third way in which people like to use moving averages is uh, they, they like to look at when two moving averages cross. So let's say for example that I'm using the uh, I'm using the 9 period and the 14 period moving average. And again guys you can see that the problem with this uh, is sometimes you do get a good signal in a good trending market but the market is not always trending and if we were to go on the electronic trading hours and look at when the market is consolidating again you're getting tons of signals so just purely based on when these two things cross sometimes it's going to give you a, a you know pretty decent signal a lot of times guys it's just going to be noise uh, you're going to get a lot of crosses because the market is detrending or consolidating and I just don't think it's really that that predictive, guys. The problem with moving averages at their very core is that they are just telling you where price has been, uh, not where price should or is going to where price is going to go. Uh, and past past performance is not indicative of future results. All the disclaimers will tell you that, and those disclaimers are true. And so I would say, guys, that overall uh, I would just get these things off of your chart. They're not telling you anything. Uh, they're giving you, especially in a detrending market, they're giving you too many signals, too many crossovers. Um, they work well sometimes in a trending market, but you can identify a trending market just looking visually at the chart. Uh, so no, I, I am not a big fan of using indicators, uh, nor am I a big fan specifically of, of using moving averages. So in this video, I wanted to target moving averages. The next thing that I want to talk about is the uh, MACD or the moving average convergence divergence. Um, guys, th this information, uh, like most indicators, is pretty useless. Um, it, whether the market it, plotting the moving average and the distance between the moving averages, which is what the moving average convergence divergence does, the price differential from from a moving average, is is just not useful. It's not predictive. Uh, it's it's nice visually. It's another way to look at the data, but it's it's taking you away from what's important, which is uh, the price on the chart and the time. Uh, so, guys, the two factors that are important are price and time, time and price, with time being first. Um, and the moving average convergence divergence takes away the time aspect of price. And when we're looking at the electronic trading hours, remember. Uh, or even the regular trading hours guys, we're looking at what time of the day it is. Do we have a high impact news event? Do we have any seasonal tendencies? Are we in an election year? Are there political reasons for the market to be inflated? 
in this in this particular instance, 2024, we sh- we surely have political reasons for the market to be uh, inflated, guys. So, you know, there's what information this data provides you. I think is uh, pretty useless. So. Anyways, guys, that's my short video on moving averages. Um, In my opinion, they are uh, not predictive of future price. And ultimately, I think that you should focus on what's important, which is time and price. Uh, Does that that mean that you're going to be a winning day trader uh, because you stop using indicators? No, guys. Uh, Day trading is very difficult. 90% of people uh, lose at day trading. And so this is not going to be easy. but by putting moving averages on your chart, you're just making things more difficult. Okay, guys, in this video, I trashed on moving averages. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this content, and I hope that you get that trash off your screen. Bye-bye. Not financial advice. Use my referral links. Bye-bye.